Well, thank you very much here. I think I have some slides. There it is. I'm starting with making a case for startups in Europe, which is very much, I think, kind of a preaching to the converted subject here. I think it would be hard to find anybody who is against startups. And I want to tell you why on the basis of evidence and what evidence and what policies that we in the European Commission see startups as being a vital part of the digital single market. And as well, hopefully, some of the things that we are going to be doing and are doing will help to enable you to reach bigger markets, to reach global markets eventually. First of all, the European startup scene. We see that the total capital invested in 2017 exceeded the record-breaking levels of 2016. We also see on the basis of studies such as Atomico, the venture capital company, that Europe has an edge in areas like deep tech and blockchain technologies, as well as music and payments, which we often see. In the areas where we have done well, where we have unicorns, it's often in an area you can access all the member states through passporting immediately. For example, the payments or where there is not so much uh, difficulty going across borders like in, in music. Uh, we also have solid top talent from 50% of the world's top tech universities. Let's get more of those people to be setting up companies and to be working here. Since 2012, AI companies have raised more than 3.75 billion over uh, 1,000 deals. The European startup scene, we see that we have 4,200 startups that are fast growing uh, in 45 countries. I mean, this is the broader Europe, raising a lot of money, 0.33% uh, of Europe's GDP, which is actually quite a lot when you consider that these are new companies. The number of unicorns, however, we see that we are still behind the US. It's a smaller internal market that we have, but it's a more homogenous internal market. And that's why with the digital single market, we really want to do as much as possible to solve that. We're ahead of very big places like India and Asia, but this is not going to be forever. We know with the demographic changes and so on, we have to be smart, agile, fast. We have to make the most out of the assets that we have. We do have the good examples, SAP, which I mean now is an older company, but started as a Europe ICT startup, or Zalando, a newer one. The Startup Europe Initiative. This is one of the programs that we have. We don't have one Silicon Valley in Europe. We have ecosystems like Tallinn, Riga, Vilnius, Berlin, Stockholm, others. We can link them up where there are areas of special strengths, fintech, blockchain, artificial intelligence, working with high-performance computing, bringing people together. They don't have to be always physically in the same space, though, I mean, people also will move. We try to make the most out of the possibilities when you're a European Union citizen to work very freely in another member state. Uh, we have seven new projects starting that are connecting ecosystems. We're doing ever more in Central and Eastern Europe. Obviously, uh, we have very strong startup scenes here in the Baltics, but also looking to places like Western Balkans, Bulgaria, Romania, where we also want to connect these startups and these markets for you. We also have international activities. Startup Europe comes to Silicon Valley, something which we've been doing for a few years now, bringing some very promising European startups that are interested in uh, going out to the, Europe, to the uh, US market and also getting the uh, European startups exposed to the venture capitalists and the investors over there that are interested. We also have initiatives with India. We had uh, 50 European startups going to the European Business Summit and startup summit this last year as well, so also looking to those markets, also working on regulatory and policy frameworks with them. We have areas like ICOs, initial coin offerings, blockchain, and so on, where often the resolution, the, uh, how to say, answer to issues has to be international because they are automatically international applications. Startup Europe's new focus, as I mentioned, one of the big focuses is on deep tech. I mean, this is kind of a broad scope anyway, uh, but uh, artificial intelligence, high performance computing, Internet of Things, uh, cybersecurity and blockchain. Also supporting smart ecosystem development. We're looking in particular now to Central and Eastern Europe, which I mean, we put also the Baltics in there. Also, I mean, even though we're close to the Nordics and also the, uh, the Western Balkans, which is a, a 
new focus. Supporting successful startups to accessing the international markets. I mentioned Silicon Valley and Africa. We're also looking to this year to Canada, where we have a free trade agreement starting. We want to make sure that startups make the most of these opportunities. And Israel, where we'll be having a Startup Europe uh, event. And I think a lot of us know the very good success story of Israel, especially in areas like cybersecurity, fintech, a lot of tech-based development. Though it's an interesting country for us because they produce a lot of startups, a lot of successful startups, but they have a little bit the challenge that Europe has as well, that they don't have so many unicorns. So we have also some things to talk about on the policy-making level on what we're perhaps doing right and what we're also doing wrong. And I mean, in these kinds of cases, your inputs are also very welcome. Uh, feel free to, to criticize us and tell what we can do better, uh, what difficult things we can work with member states, with your member states to make better. Fintech, we have an EU action plan coming up on the 7th of March, and this might sound a little bit bureaucratic, but it sets out what we're going to do in fintech, again, to have this single market more complete. Something that you can very much hope to see there is that on crowdfunding, equity crowdfunding and peer-to-peer -peer loans, that there will be a regulation that will promise passporting across borders. I mean, this is what our, our Vice President, both Vice President Dombrovskis for Latvia and Vice President Katainen said. This is in preparation. You can expect that to be in that package as well as issues like distributed ledger and blockchain technologies were very positive, I mean, beyond the cryptocurrencies, which is, I mean, one initial use, but looking across the financial sector for things like post-trade, um, other types of uses, uh, proxy for shareholder voting, like in, in Estonia that's been used. And we've launched an EU blockchain observatory and forum. This is a little bit some of the things that we're doing with, with blockchain, and I do have to underline that we're, we're technology neutral. We support startups and innovation in all spheres, but in some areas, like also artificial intelligence, where we see this as a big opportunity for Europe, we also are ready to invest money in the next budget and also trying to make sure that the legislative framework, though we probably won't say blockchain anywhere and we won't say we won't have a regulation or a directive on blockchain, we want to make sure that rules don't require still paper somewhere or rules require one central depository. We want to really open up the competition for blockchain-based innovation. We launched an observatory and forum, which sounds maybe a little bit passive. It's not intended to be. We'll have working groups on things like the financial sector, ICOs, initial coin offerings, uh, beyond the financial sector, also to logistics, to health possibly, anti-money laundering, know your customer. We're cooperating with member state governments. We'll be having a so-called digital day two in uh, Brussels on the 10th of April, working with ministers who want to declare that they want to join an effort to really have Europe be and perhaps stay a leader in blockchain worldwide. Supporting standardization and interoperability, that's also often important, keeping in mind especially that these are voluntary standards, but for a startup that you don't have to think of everything anew if you want to offer a service to a municipal government or to a big corporate that you can uh, be in line with a, a standard. There's work on this at the International Standardization Organization. I'm participating myself in smart contracts, also at SEN, Senelec, Etsy, all these different acronyms for the standardization organizations. Financing pilots at the European Union level, we have about 883 million uh, euro out right now in blockchain projects, 348 million euro coming up where you can also use other technologies but uh, challenges that are suitable for blockchain. We're working toward more legal certainty, as I mentioned, the initial coin offerings, smart contracts, data policy compliance, again, in a spirit of how can we enable innovation, how can we help things to happen, take down barriers, of course, keeping things like consumer protection, and in the case of the initial coin offerings, making sure that if it is a security, that it follows security laws, but if it's not a security, then at least allowing the innovation to flourish uh, investigating needs for an EU blockchain infrastructure and preparing the running of EU services. We don't want to be just talking, we want to walk the talk, as the saying goes. So some of the things that we do, uh, coming from Brussels with the member states, we want to try at least piloting and probably implement on blockchain ourselves. So this is something that's coming up and these are going to be innovation procurement uh, possibilities as well for European startups. I mean, we know you're very strong in these areas. 
The digital single market, um, how will this hopefully enable you to go across more member states? We know it's not always so easy. We want to modernize e-commerce. We want to end unjustified geo-blocking. More efficient and affordable parcel delivery, again, so people can order things from Latvia or Estonia or Lithuania or Poland very easily. Strengthen consumer trust, have a consumer rights framework that's fit for the digital age, not too bureaucratic for you, but that consumers feel good about ordering from other countries in the EU. A modern copyright framework and reducing the value-added tax burden. And here's where you can find some information on fintech, on the blockchain funding opportunities. This was from an information day that we had, and I think the web streaming is still online. And also, we have a call for proposals right now, supporting experimentation frameworks and regulatory compliance. These are the so-called regulatory sandboxes as well, which is a policy innovation that we're encouraging it. You're going to see it in the FinTech Action Plan, but we already said in the startups and scale-ups communications, sorry for the bureaucraties a little bit, but these are our policy documents where we set out the vision that we have, and we want to have an enabling framework for regulatory sandboxes. This is a tool where we want to bring together those regulators who are innovating together with the startups, together also with the innovative bigger companies, and see how we can have, again, a more common approach between those who are taking this innovative and procreation type of stance. We also have a one-stop shop, which is intended to help those of you who want to go cross-border with information about requirements, and uh, this is where it's necessary to say we have subsidiarity in the European Union. We don't dictate and won't dictate everything from Brussels, so we do have different requirements. Here you can find out where some of those requirements are still on the national level. Uh, we are hoping with some of these areas that I mentioned in the digital signal market to make things more seamless and easier for you to go cross-border, but this is a way with information that we also intend to help. Um, and thank you. I'll be here also for the rest of the day, and I'll be moderating a session on Baltics on the Rise with some of our, our startups and uh, uh, the Latvian Minister of Economy here. And so also between the sessions, I'm happy to answer your questions. Uh, get in touch with us at Startup Europe, or if you're interested in the Blockchain Observatory and Forum, we're going to be working through various use cases, trying to go from pilots, from proof of concepts, to real implementation in Europe. And we want to be there on your side and in enabling and moving forward this cause. So uh, thank you again for your uh, attention. See you.